Hello. With an understanding of relational and logic operators, we have the ability to make decisions in code. One category of making decisions is branches. In MATLAB, there are three types of branching statements. In this video, we will discuss if-else branches. This cartoon provides an analogy to branching statements in code. The seasoned gentleman approaches a fork in the road, and now he must make a choice. If he walks down one path, then he cannot go down another. And there must be some reason why he chooses one path over the others. Perhaps one path has better trees, or perhaps it leads to his hometown. Regardless, he evaluates the path conditions and then chooses one and only one path. There are a couple differences between this situation and MATLAB branches. In real life, the man can consider all his options simultaneously. In MATLAB, the conditions are evaluated one at a time. Further, in real life, the man must choose one option. He cannot simply hop over the fork. In MATLAB, there is the possibility of never choosing a branch. The general structure for an if-else branching statement is shown on the right. It must begin with an if and end with an end. In between, there can be any number of else ifs, including zero. There can also be one else as the last branch, but this is optional. Only one path can be taken. Path, in this sense, means a series of programming steps to take here indicated by statement 1, statement 2, dot, dot, dot. If we happen to choose this branch, only this block of code is executed. How does MATLAB choose one path over another? By evaluating the conditions that follow the if and else ifs. But it evaluates these in order from top to bottom. If condition 1 is true, then the first branch is taken without ever looking at the remaining conditions. If condition 1 is false, then condition 2 is checked, and so on. Is there a condition paired with the else? No, there is not. There never is, so don't put a condition there. If an else statement is ever reached, we are guaranteed to go down that path. This is why the else must come at the very bottom. Think about an else like this. When I was a kid and my mother said, clean your room or else, I knew there was no decision left to make. I was going to clean my room. Let's look at an example of an if-else branching statement, and we'll start with this first set of values for A and B. When we reach the if, we must evaluate the condition. In this case, 7 greater than 5 is true, so this branch gets taken. Is the next condition also true? Yes, because B does equal 0. However, that does not matter. We never look at the second condition since the first condition is true. So within this branch, c equals 2 times 7, or 14. Now for the second set of values. First condition, is 3 bigger than 5? False. Second condition, is 1 equal to 0? False. Third condition uses an AND, so both of these relational operators must be true. Is 3 bigger than 1? True. And is 1 not equal to 0? also true. So this branch is chosen, and c equals 3 plus 1. For the third set of values, we see that the first condition is false, 5 is not greater than 5, but the second condition is true, so c takes on the value cat. For the final example, we see the first condition is false, the second condition is false, the third condition is false. So we reach the else statement. There are no conditions here to evaluate, so this branch is chosen, and c equals negative 9. Here's one example of an application of an if-else branching statement. As you know from algebra, the zeros of a quadratic equation can be found using this quadratic formula. The number of real zeros can be determined by the value of b squared minus 4ac, also called the discriminant. If the discriminant is positive, there are two real zeros. Otherwise, if the discriminant is zero, there is one real zero. Otherwise, there are no real zeros. Wait a second. What I said in English reads almost the same as an if-else branch, so we can easily convert the idea to code. First, a, b, and c are defined. Then the discriminant is computed. Then a decision is made. 
If the discriminant is positive, then we compute the two zeros and print them in a sentence. Else, if the discriminant equals zero, we compute the single zero and print it. If neither of those two previous conditions are true, then we know the discriminant must be negative. And that means our sentence should say there are no real zeros. Going back to our analogy, nested if statements are like choosing one path from a fork and having that lead to yet another fork. They look complicated, but remember that MATLAB simply evaluates an order from top to bottom and skips over branches that are not chosen. When you do type any if statements into a script, MATLAB will by default tab over each of the branches. Accept this default formatting. It makes the code much easier to read. This example is one I call living situation. Let's see what your living situation would be given these three input parameters. The first condition at the top checks if your age is larger than 18. That is true, so this first main branch is chosen. This means everything under the else will be ignored. So the next condition checked is whether you are single. This is false, so this branch is skipped. Next, we check if your salary is under 50000 That is false, so we continue on. Next, we reach an else, so we go down that branch, and place is set to equal own house. I hope you see that we use logic all the time to guide our decisions and judgments. Using a structure like if-else branches simply writes out the logic in a linear fashion. As long as you walk step-by-step step through these structures, they will not be difficult to understand.